Hi, this is John Guest, and yet again, this is going to be a short video addressing one of the questions in the February edition of the Economic Review. Um, if you look at the article on measuring school performance, the first question is asking about X inefficiency. And the question basically is, the author states that a lack of competition between schools might lead to X inefficiency in schools. So using an average cost curve diagram, explain precisely what is meant by the term X inefficiency. So we're just going to go through and explain X inefficiency using an average total cost curve. So you can see the axis on the diagram. Obviously, traditionally with a cost curve, we've got output on the X axis and costs on the Y axis. So let's take a point on this diagram. OK, so let's take this average total cost curve. Now, what do we assume along this cost curve? Well, we assume along this cost curve that at every output, the firm is using the minimum cost method of producing that output. In other words, it's using the cheapest method possible of producing that output. And that's something that perhaps students don't necessarily think about when they look at these curves. So let's take a specific point on this curve to explain that in a little bit more detail. So let's take point A, and let's imagine at point A we were looking at producing an output of Q1. Obviously, if we take that Q1 up to point A, and we read off the cost curve on the y-axis, the cost of producing that output, which on this diagram is C1, that is telling us that the cheapest average cost method of producing Q1 is C1. We are using the best combination of factors of production and we mix them in the most efficient and low cost manner. And actually, slightly technically advanced maybe, but as an aside, that means that the extra output that we're getting from each input must be the same at this point. Now, what's true for point A is true for any point on this line. So let's take another point, point B. And again, this would be producing Q2. And if you read off from point B, so we've got C2 on the y-axis, yet again, C2 is showing us this is the cheapest possible method of producing Q2. And obviously, just repeat the point again, what's true for point A or point B is true for any point along that line. Now, there was an economist called uh, Liebenstein who wrote an article in the American Economic Review in 1966 and he introduced this idea of X inefficiency. And really what he was suggesting was that maybe in certain circumstances it wasn't really accurate to suggest that firms were producing output in the cheapest possible way. Because if we think about it for a minute, if you are producing output in the cheapest possible way, that's actually quite a difficult task. You've got to constantly search for the cheapest method of producing that output. If technology changes, if the cost of those inputs change, that means that you'll have to change the way you do it. And making those changes can be difficult, takes a lot of effort. Have the managers and staff in that organisation got the incentives to exert that effort to find out and implement that cheapest cost method of production. And really what Liebenstein suggested was this may be true if we've got a very competitive market. Because, okay, we've said it's very difficult to implement and find the cheapest cost method of production. So what would be the penalty if you didn't? Well, in a competitive market, very competitive market, the penalty would be extremely high because there's a danger you would go out of business and obviously all the staff would lose their jobs. What Liebenstein suggested is, well, let's imagine we were looking at another market where the level of competition was much lower. In fact, where there were just a few firms who didn't compete that intensively with each other. And also, let's imagine there were quite large barriers to entry that prevented new rivals from entering the market. Then in this situation, the firm may be able to operate, um, produce outputs that are not at the lowest cost method and still make money. So they'd have lax cost controls. Sometimes this is referred to as organisational slack. 
they may not be employing the optimal number of people, they're simply just not using the most efficient method of production because it's hard to find it and implement it, and actually they can still make a profit with a method that is less efficient. And this really is what X inefficiency is. It's this idea that a firm isn't using the minimum cost method of production. So obviously in the article, the author is suggesting that maybe if schools aren't in competition with each other, the schools might not have the incentive to use the most efficient way of producing their educational output, their educational services. What would this mean quickly for the average total cost diagram? Well, let's take Q1 again in this diagram. This would mean that perhaps the firm or the organisation wouldn't necessarily be producing this output in the cheapest possible way. And in actual fact, given the organisational slack, let's just assume that the actual cost is at point C. So I think I've labelled it in the diagram as C1X. So in effect, this vertical distance between A and C can be thought of as the level of X inefficiency, the organisational slack, the degree to which the organisation is not minimising its costs. And obviously we could do the same thing at point B for producing Q2. Again, we can imagine there would be that same X inefficiency if the competitive pressure wasn't there. And so now we could see that instead of the minimum cost output C2 of producing Q2, we've got a cost of C2X. And again, the vertical distance between point B and point D is a way of representing that organisational slack. Obviously, this would be true for all output levels. And in effect, rather than the average total cost curve that we assume when we draw these models of market structure and when we're looking at different competitive environments, in actual fact, we could have an actual cost curve that was above this level, and I've just labelled that as ATC. X, which represents the difference between the cost curve, assuming that the most efficient method of production is being used, and the cost curve when we've got inefficiency. So that's really what X inefficiency is. Perhaps you sort of go away and think maybe in your own time about how X inefficiency is different from productive efficiency in economics, and maybe how it's different from allocative inefficiency or efficiency in economics. Also, there's a little bit linked to this in the e-review. There's an article on the brewing merger, and again, we refer to this concept in that article as well. So hopefully you found that video useful, and that's the end of the short video. Thank you very much.